And I think one of the reasons why I push ACA so much where I work is I work primarily with the chronic relapsers, people from alcohol and substance abuse that they might get some clean time, maybe even years, but then they, they relapse. And why do you think they relapse? They relapse because they're not dealing with the underlying ACA issues. Uh, I had somebody tell me the other day that ACA uh, versus AA is like mowing your lawn. You know, I don't know if anybody else has heard this. I don't know if he made it up or if he stole it from somebody. I'm stealing it from him. But he said that AA is like mowing your lawn. It goes across and it cuts the surface off and you're getting rid of the, the lawn. But ACA comes through and rips the, the roots out. And I think that's where the healing starts. When you take the buttons away, they can't be pushed any longer. Okay. So you've got to do the work. So one of the reasons why we become stuck is because we don't do the work. Or we think we're doing the work, but we're not. Talking about things doesn't necessarily help. Sometimes it's almost like a form of gossiping. You have to bring it into the room. You have to bring it into the present. This is why I like the power of psychodrama and role plays and journaling so much because you're not keeping it out here and talking about it. You're actually bringing it and putting it in front of you where now you can confront it, face it, and hopefully put it where it needs to be. Sometimes people stay stuck because they have wishful thinking. As long as I come and I sit in this chair then recovery is going to fall out of the sky, you know? As long as I stand by the door and I'm the greeter, everybody is going to love me and know my name. You know, we just have this, this thing of wishful thinking that, that life is just going to come to us and it's going to happen. I know so many people that love to run to meetings, but they always run in the door five, ten minutes late, and then right as the meeting's over, out the door. And they forget that every meeting has three parts to it. The meeting before, the meeting itself, and the meeting after. And sometimes before and after is more important than the meeting itself. So, so you can't just be wishful thinking that by sitting in that chair, recovery is going to hit you. Acquiring tools and not using them. It's like having a leaky faucet and you have all the tools, the washers, the wrenches. You've gone on YouTube, you've watched how to, how to, how to change the washers yourself and they're sitting there, and you're watching the drip complaining about it, and you're not using your tools. I see that so often. I deal with patients with, with chronic pain, and because of the chronic pain, they get addicted to opiates, and we take them off the opiates, and they're back in their, their chronic pain, and they come in every week, and they want to complain about their pain, and I look at them, and I say, you're wearing flip-flops. You're not giving yourself the proper support to put your spine in alignment to reduce the, the, the pressure you have on your spine. Why are you not taking care of yourself and wearing something that's going to give you support? And every week they come in and complain about that, and every week they're wearing flip-flops. Sometimes we just don't use the tools that are in front of us.